when you're at rest, you'll sit in a chair. Here's your look at the NECA toys. Robocop Omni Consumer Products. Robocop with chair. After fighting baddies all day, dock the 7 inch scale ultimate battle damage Robocop figure in the included screen accurate chair with moving elements. The chair is over 8 inches tall, over 7 inches wide, and has a swiveling seat as well as articulated swiveling monitors. Robocop comes with even more accessories too. Interchangeable data spike fist, auto 9 pistol, attached muzzle blast effect, and additional interchangeable head with the likeness of Peter Weller. While wow, Robo is here hanging out, upholding the law, it's one of his prime directives after all. We're going to go ahead and grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. It's after all one of my own prime directives, always measuring these figures to tell you how tall they stand. And while I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of Robocop, as battle damaged as he may be, along with his mechanical chair. Robocop stands about six inch, six and a half inches in height. In fact, the figure stands exactly six and a half inches in height. And that translates to a figure that's 17 centimeters tall. In a way, we had already gotten this figure before from NECA Toys, bringing in now the battle damaged Robocop that was sold separately, minus his mechanical chair. Uh, Mold-wise, they're exactly the same. In fact, the paint's pretty close too. There's a few little things, a telltale sign that this is the original one as it has like a little smear of brown just, just in between his, his torso here. The newer one doesn't have that, but mileage may vary actually how they paint these figures. Other than that, they did re-release this figure at least with the mechanical chair and now the new swapped out head sculpt that bears a very strong likeness to actor Peter Weller that played the role for at least two of the three films. The better two of the three films. Uh, for other comparisons as well, we can bring in one of the Robocops. This one happens to be the one that has the spring holster. And we could also bring in this one that I always consider at least on my shelf as the Robocop 2 Robocop. Technically, it's really from Robocop 3, the one that comes in clue with his jetpack though. Oh, maybe a double dip. We all know the real reason why you're going to be wanting to pick up this Robocop for yourself. It's primarily for his mechanical chair that we're going to be about to have a look at. In the meantime, though, let's actually have a look at the accessories first that come in clue with the Robocop. First of which, the figure comes in clue with his Auto 9. Getting a closer look at that. There's not much different here with this Auto 9 that we haven't already gotten before with the previous Auto 9 releases. It's all molded here in what looks to be just solely black plastic. Unless they had gone in and painted it black. But if they've already molded it in black, it seems to defeat the purpose completely if they would have to then spend the money to paint it. But either way, this does fit into his hand. Uh, simply just go ahead and fit this into his one hand, as the figure only has really one suitable hand for holding the Auto 9. It's more than enough, though. You can see he holds it perfectly fine. One thing, though, about this figure, though, is he doesn't have the spring holstered leg. Though, if you did actually pick up the original Battle Damage version, and I'm going to be bringing back several times for comparisons... The original one also didn't have the spring holstered leg, so they have carried over the same mold trait with that as well. One thing you can also do too, while Robo is still holding his firearm, is that you can actually take the muzzle blast here. It's a blast effect that, as you can see right here, kind of looks like a really, a really hairy pair of eyebrows and a furry beard, although really the two wouldn't be connecting anyways. Uh, you can take it, this translucent, almost clear plastic muzzle blast, and just attach it onto the end of the Auto 9. That looks really cool, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It does look really, really cool. I always like NECA when NECA can throw in things like this. It gives certainly some more shelf appeal, as I always am selling these reviews. Shelf appeal is always important when it comes to displaying your figures. It gives them that little bit of extra oomph. And I'm all about little extra oomphs. Go ahead and take that off before I lose it. Go ahead and also remove the Auto 9 before I also lose that. And while I'm also holding Robocop in hand right now, the figure also comes in clue with his data link spike. Good for, of course, linking in to systems or also stabbing the neck, the jugular of Clarence Bodiger. This one doesn't seem bloodied, though. Well, certainly the rest of Robocop seems a little worse for wear. This is pretty easy, actually, to remove. The arm actually just pops right off. 
It's a soft, slightly softer plastic that they've used actually for the form. So it makes actually removing it from the peg that much easier. How satisfying is that? Then we can go ahead and take the data link. Be careful, of course, not putting pressure against the spike because that's going to break off. And take the data link and put it in place. Certainly one way of displaying the figure, although likely if you're going to be displaying the figure on top of its chair, you're not likely going to be displaying him with data link. Not that I'm going to be telling you guys how to display your figures. You can display them really any which way that you want, but I'm sure that would be something more so that you'd be displaying loose and on the shelf like this and have the Robocop figure just displayed as you see. Go ahead and pop that off right now and replace it then with a swap, well, swapped back in hand and give us Robocop the way he should look, at least when you get him out of the packaging. The one other thing that this figure obviously sells with as well is the fact he comes in clear with a swappable head sculpt bearing the likeness not only of Alex Murphy, but also bearing a good likeness as well of actor Peter Weller. We're finally getting a likeness rights being signed over here. I gotta say, it's actually a pretty good looking likeness. Images, honestly, when I saw online didn't look as much like him, but I know now that I physically have him in hand, it literally the hand, the head in hand, I gotta say it's like a, it's a pretty good likeness of Peter Weller. You can see he's got the little bullet wound there on the top of his head. This can be swapped out for the existing head. But I guess one thing I did want to point out before I do that, I'm going to slide over the chair. Where is he going with this? Uh, one thing also I wanted to point out, though, with this particular Robocop going and bringing back in the Battle Damage version again, so you can see, is that these two Robocops happen to sport smaller heads than the ones that were spring holstered. I'm going to bring this one in here, not to surprise any of you. This is the one that gets commonly used for many of the mold releases and a fine looking Robocop it was. When you look at it though, I'm gonna compare, compare it obviously to the newer ones so you can see. The head sculpt is noticeably smaller. I think though what's smaller is not only have they moved the helmet a little bit closer down, covering his nose now completely, but you can see also as well, it's a smaller head sculpt. Now the original battle damage did have the smaller head, but it's now carried over as well to this newer figure too. Smaller head than the spring holster release. Just wanted to point that out quickly. Now, again, going back to the head sculpt, again, quickly looking at the battle damage version of Robocop, you can see, again, there's a lot of damage done to his body. And in this case, with his head, you can see all the bullets been bounced off the, at least the hard shell of his head, hopefully not damaging any of the, uh, the tissue what's left of him underneath. Good looking head sculpt. It is a little bit, again, smaller than the ones we got before. Again, not the battle damage release. But then to swap the head sculpt off, it's pretty easy. I thought it would be a lot more difficult, but it's easy. You just pop that off the ball joint. Take now the Alex Murphy head sculpt, pop it in place. Now, if you did want this Robocop, but you didn't want necessarily to get the mechanical chair, NECA did also release a standalone Ultimate Robocop that did have also this alternate head sculpt. Came also included with the data link spike, came also included with the Auto 9, but also came included with the Cobra Assault Rifle, if that's one way you want to go as well. And again, this is Robocop where you have a very different look to him. He's a lot cleaner, though, up here than he is for the rest of the body. I feel, if anything, they probably should have battle damaged the face as well, adding just again, like, a little bit of blood, not blood necessarily, but a little bit of oil or whatever else is all over his body. Make, add some of that perhaps to his face as well. But what a fine looking sculpt this ended up being. I'm hoping again, the camera's doing it proper justice. Now I can hear you. I can hear you yelling in the back of the crowd. Could you technically use this head with another Robocop say if you don't like the battle damage look? Thank you for reading the script. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this right now. And while I don't have that standalone Robocop, which would be the cleaner version by the way, I do have a spring holstered Robocop. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the head off. This was a lot harder to do than I thought it was going to be. I ended up having to heat the head in hot water. I'm just going to remove it from the ball joint. Again, this was so much more difficult the first time I did this. But you go ahead and then take Alex Murphy's head and pop it onto the ball joint. So really, for all intents and purposes, if you did want the cleaner version of Robocop, and let's say you only had the available budget, well, let's just say for the scenario out there, you already had the Robocops earlier that NECA had released, and you still have those in your collection. You only have the money to pick up one Robocop, so you really want to get the one that has mechanical chair that we're going to get to in more, more in a moment. For all intents and purposes, you really could swap this head sculpt out with any of those other Robocop figures and still have an unmasked, unhelmeted Alex Murphy. Technically, as well, the coloring of Alex Murphy, the blue that they use, is a little bit more close in quarters, I think, to the one from Robocop 3. 
But again, being that the ball joint works the exact same way, simply just rinse and repeat, pop this head off and replace it in fact with this, head, this body right here, which is maybe what I'm gonna consider to do. Eventually I will wanna get myself that standalone Robocop. I'm gonna get myself and have on display, I think, a battle damage Robocop unhelmeted. And then I'm gonna take then the version that has this head and put it maybe on a cleaner body as well. So I'll have two different versions of those. But just to show you, yeah, you can pop them off and easily replace them with another Robocop body. This concludes our tutorial. Let's go ahead and just remove this back off, take it off the off his body. We're gonna put that decapitated Robocop to the side. We're actually gonna move this guy out of the way as well. Now let's go ahead and pop this onto the body. And again, short of the fact it doesn't have the battle damage look on his face, it is a nice look for Robocop. You know, be all honest though, I don't know if I would ever see myself displaying that version of Robocop with the mechanical chair. By the time we see Robocop looking in the state that he is, I don't know if I would want to display him on the chair. I think I would much rather honestly get the cleaner looking Robocop and put him in the chair instead. Just to use the example of this, the legs on all of the Robocop figures are built the exact same way, other than the fact they just have the spring holstered legs. So really you can take the legs, bend them the exact same way, and you can take yourself a cleaner version of Robocop and attach them onto the chair the exact same way. Now for me, again, the use of the mechanical chair comes more earlier into the movie that I think I would much rather display a cleaner looking Robocop in his mechanical chair instead of actually putting a battle damaged Robocop in the chair instead. One other thing I actually did want to mention about the chair without actually looking at the chair just yet. Uh, I do think in this case, instead of giving us a battle damaged version of Robocop, I think I would have ra much rather again a cleaner version. And I would almost even go as far to say, instead of giving a battle, a, a, an unmasked head like this, I almost would have instead giving us the dream Robocop face instead, which is essentially this face right here with the grimmest teeth. We all remember that scene where Robocop is dreaming and he's moving back and forth and he's showing all his teeth. I would much rather have had that head sculpt, I think included with the mechanical chair, and then maybe then released a battle damaged Robocop that had the Alex Murphy head sculpt as a separate standalone figure. And then you could go, go to town and go crazy with all blood splattered all over his body. Either way, though, again, like the figure works exactly the same way when it comes to attaching them onto the chair. You just, again, again, bend the knees. The knees do bend just by the design of the figure a little more awkwardly. They kind of bow in like this. But like the other one, we can easily just have him sitting in his chair. Again, I don't know. I would think much rather display him in the cleaner looking Robocop, especially to go along with his chair. I promise we're going to go back to that in a moment. Uh, for the details, certainly on the figure... Not much, again, does get changed from the battle damage release. And while the head sculpts now are completely different, you can see the placement of damage is exactly the same between the two bodies. You've got the little indentation there on the top of his torso. You've got like the little scratches and tears that he has on the top of his armor there in his shoulders. And the placement is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the paint is just slightly, marginally different. You got a little bit of their additional like smearing there of the, I guess, the grease, the oil. It has a little bit more of it on the shoulder, but mileage, again, may vary exactly the same bodies for the articulation here on robocop now that i'm using this head sculpt it's going to work the exact same way though the head is on a ball joint you can't technically rotate the head all the way around well you can it gets a little hung up in some of the areas but as long as you've got the head a little higher up you should be able to rotate it all the way around the arms also again rotate all the way around there's a hinge joint as well so they come out about a 90 about a 45 not quite a 90 but a 45 it's only a single hinge in the elbow there's a rotation in the wrist, obviously, well, not the wrist, but like the forearm, obviously for this one is you can be the one that's popping this off, but this also rotates back and forth as well. There's no articulation in the wrist though. He has an upper torso ball joint, a little tighter on this figure though, waist swivel, legs hinge out, bring him forward and bring him back. Single hinge only on the knee, but it goes actually a far distance back. He does have an ankle pivot and you can also move his feet back and forth, but only just by a little bit. He has no, also no toe, toe articulation. So that's Robocop. Again, if you don't want the mechanical chair, you can also get pretty much this look with a cleaner look and simply just get the standalone Robocop that's going to come and with the same portrait of Alex Murphy. On to the chair itself. I know this is the thing, that, of course, you guys will want to see the most. Now, the chair does have some moving functions to it. It has, of course, the arm that's on the side that has the visor or has the monitor with Robo Dreaming. You can see there's some sticker application applied there. The monitor also independently rotates back and forth this way. This... uh. I guess heart monitor does move back and forth as well. Or I guess what would this be? A meter? Some sort of meter that's reading his pulse, I'm guessing. This moves back and forth as well. So some possibility going on there. 
And you can also as well take these arms and move them forward as they slide along the track. You can slide them a little bit further back when Robocop's not seated, or you can bring them full forward as well when Robocop is sitting in it. There seems to be no posability here for the, the at least the leg platform or the foot platform where he puts his feet. There's also articulation where you can swivel this back and forth. But the one point I thought there would have been articulation would have been this area right here. I'm pointing at it right now. Now, based solely on the one that I have with me in front of, in front of me right now, I'm telling you, I can't move it. Now, there's a likelihood it could still move. And maybe if you had had luck moving yours, you can certainly let me know down below in the comment section. But I know when moving mine, it made that awkward crack noise. You know the noise that alerts you right away that you shouldn't be moving things because you know if you keep moving it, it's just going to ultimately snap right off? That's the sound it was making when I was trying to move this. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. If it's there, that's great. But I, I'm going to, again, I'm not going to move it myself because it seems like there's no give. It seems like it's also a separate piece. You can see there's a gap between this section and the main body, the part that holds the chair. But I can't move it. I could probably just try to heat it up with a hairdryer, or maybe it's just never really designed to move. Although it's supposed to move really in the movie. Then you've got the main control, control console that has all the knobs. It's a really heavy piece. So heavy, in fact, I thought they probably could have put a battery compartment in there to illuminate the, the, the little lights on the sides. The problem with it, though, is that these would have to be real working wires. And of course, that would increase the cost of the figure as well. Uh, this doesn't have a battery compartment, at least not that I can see, but it does have free rolling wheels. So Robo can take a ride while sitting in his chair. And again, one last time, just to show what Robocop looks like in his chair. Go ahead, bend the knees, bend the knees. Get Robo as perfectly comfortable as you can. And then you can sit him inside the chair. The pros of this set is the fact that you finally get yourself a Robocop mechanical chair. The pros as well of this set is the fact that you also get yourself finally an Alex Murphy unmasked portrait. Where is chin guard goes still is a mystery one minute he's taking off the top of his helmet the next minute his chin guard is gone some of the mini series robocops explained it by actually just having the chin guard still left behind that looked a little awkward and i think another one actually had the chin guard just mechanically move up and out of the way kind of like optimus prime's trailer that didn't make sense either but I think I really do like this set. I am still keen to pick up the standalone Robocop that's still going to, again, have the standalone portrait of Alex Murphy still available. So if you did want to go that route, maybe you don't have as much space to have something like this displayed, you can also go that option as well. Uh, the, again, the only thing I would have said, though, and I'm just going to move this one over, is just to bring back in a cleaner version of Robocop, one of my favorites that, Robo, that NECA have made. This is the Robocop 3 Robocop that has the tinted blue. I honestly would have released, I think, this set with a cleaner looking Robocop, maybe release the Alex Murphy battle damage as a standalone release that maybe could have included like baby food and all that kind of stuff. And I would have released the mechanical chair with more a cleaner version of Robo. And I would have also included not an alternate head sculpt necessarily with Alex Murphy, but maybe an alternate head sculpt that actually has him with the dreaming Robocop grimaced teeth. That's the way I would have gone, but I'm still happy we finally, finally have ourselves a Robocop that has Alex Murphy's face visible, not something that was pulled off with the earlier releases. As was the case in the movie, NECA Toys did include an unmasked head sculpt of Alex Murphy to honor him, or honor Peter Weller, who played the role so perfectly for the first two films. It's a shame he didn't come back actually for Robocop 3, but then seeing the dumpster fire that ended up being Robocop 3, I certainly don't blame the fact that he didn't want to come back. There has been some rumors and some speculation that Peter Weller may come back to some extent to do a Returns of Robocop. Now, that's all in development right now, so I'm not even sure if that's something that's going to still materialize. But I think in some extent, they could probably bring back Peter Weller to play a Robocop. All the moving things from a distance, they would obviously get just a different actor to play that. But up close, I think you could still use Peter Weller's face considering really that he is a cyborg and that he actually has human skin wrapped around the front of his helmet or around, around the front of his face, it would make sense that tissue would start to deteriorate or, quote, get older in time. So I think that would be one smart way to pull off why exactly Alex Murphy so, looks so old, exactly the same way that an endoskeleton of a Terminator has the human skin on the front that ages as well. Now, certainly when it comes to this release of Robocop with his mechanical chair, I like the look of the mechanical chair. Uh, it doesn't have light-up features or anything like that, but I think it more than makes up for, for a super detailed chair that we can finally put on display with an unmasked Alex Murphy. 
Still, though, as mentioned in this review, I'm likely, I think, leaning more to displaying a cleaner looking Robocop just by looking at whenever we see him sitting in the chair. It's always generally Robocop cleaner. It's never him in this bad state like this. This is more the way he looks near the end of the movie. He's killing Clarence Boddicker and he's off to stop Dick Jones. I don't know if I would then display this figure sitting in his chair, but I can always yank the head off of Alex Murphy and swap it out, in fact, with another Robocop figures as the head sculpt uses the exact same size ball joint. You may struggle a bit with the older figures, and I would certainly encourage using hot water or even a hairdryer just to soften that joint up a bit because it's going to be a struggle. Those heads are really never intended to be removed, to be swapped out with something else, so they're very tight quarters when it comes to the way they attach onto the ball socket. But they can be removed, as you saw in this review, and you can use the Alex Murphy head with any one of those earlier Robocops. Good if you're only investing to get the mechanical chair and not plan to pick up the standalone release Robocop, you can then have Robocop displayed in two different ways. One with the helmet and the mysterious chin guard that just vanishes and disappears. Its whereabouts remain still unknown. And then, of course, you then you can have Robocop with his Alex Murphy look. For me, I'm going to be displaying this Robocop, the battle damage look on his own, and maybe put the data link spike in his hand, and then I'm going to put a cleaner Robocop in the mechanical chair in, instead. Big, big thank you, though. Big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Robocop with mechanical chair that we could have a look at in this video. Let me know down below. First of all, what's your favorite Robocop movie? I know many people kind of lean and teeter before between one and two. Most people generally say Robocop 1 is the superior film. I still like Robocop 2. I still like Robocop 2. But also let me know if you've picked up this figure for yourself, how exactly do you have it displayed? Do you have it displayed with Robocop's helmet, helmeted head? Do you have it displayed with Alex Murphy's head? Or have you used another Robocop to be sitting in the chair instead? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.